Imagine making $1 million before you even graduate. Well, I did. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how. I believe I am the person perfectly positioned to speak on this topic to you because I don't come from money. My family has always struggled financially. We're immigrants. My parents never went to college. My parents don't speak English. They went through a nasty divorce that caused a lot of mental health issues across my family. My family had accumulated a lot, I mean, a lot of credit card debt. It was horrific. So the idea of generating this much money at my my age is such a unique and new phenomenon for my entire family line. And I've been able to do some really, really cool things with that money to help my family and the community around me. So everything that I share with you as we speak more on business throughout this channel is through the lens of somebody that's been in both spots, where they were broke, lost, and confused without any direction or guidance from anybody, to now having been able to make over a million dollars, being able to take care of my entire family, to having team members in London and Cali and Dubai. And I would be foolish not to say that luck doesn't play a role. Of course it does. But if you show up every single day, you can ensure that when that luck comes your way, you will be ready. You'll be ready to capitalize on it and take full advantage of it. And I will show you exactly how with these seven really important tips. My name is Gio and you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Business has been a huge passion of mine for the last four and a half years while curating many. And I've tried a lot of different things because I never had that guidance. I never had somebody to tell me, hey, you should try this, or you should try that. I was just looking at the world around me, trying to find various needs and seeing where my skill sets resided and then trying to do my very best in it. And I failed many, many times, but I've now understood what really, really does set apart a really good entrepreneur. And I'm so excited to be able to curate more videos that's centered around this idea. So no matter what age you are, if you're somebody that's still in school, you can do this because because I did it. If you're somebody that's already graduated and you have yet to find a job, this is something that can resonate with you. Or if you already have a job and you're looking to curate more income streams outside of it, these videos are gonna be extremely helpful for you. So leave your comments below in terms of what you're interested in in the world of entrepreneurship and hopefully we can curate a video for you. Give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe. With all that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Number one, age isn't your limitation, experience is. You must have credibility to establish a business, but it doesn't come through age as once thought, but through experience. And this misconception comes from the fact that traditionally age and experience had a really strong correlation. It's really hard to see experience when you look at somebody, but you can see age. So the older somebody gets, the more experience they accumulate. And people will look at that person and see that they're older. But in today's information age, there's a new, unique opportunity for all of us to take advantage of. This is no longer the case. Age doesn't determine your credibility, experience does. You have the opportunity to go out into the world and learn whatever skill that you wanna learn. And that's extremely, extremely powerful. And it can be as simple as that. We don't have to overcomplicate it, but it does take effort. If you're not spending the time outside of your day-to-day -day responsibility, so if you are a student, that's your time in class, and if you are a working professional, that's your time at your job place, to curate a high-value skill, you are missing out on a golden opportunity. There are so many resources out there, both paid and free, but it's not enough to consume that information. It's important for you to apply it and put into practice. These are high value skills because there's a high barrier to entry and that's why I always recommend that you choose one. Don't go out there and try to curate a whole bunch of high value skills because you won't have the bandwidth when you have your day to day responsibilities to be able to develop the depth of knowledge and with the type of experience needed to establish credibility in all of those domains. So just select one put effort towards it, continuously fail over and over and over again with that domain, get that experience in, that's how you establish credibility to be then able to start a business of your own. Do not wait till you're older. 
Take control now. Go out into the world, find that resource, consume that information, put into practice, get the depth of experience needed, and then start making money. Two, you don't lack time, you lack focus. Again, I believe I am perfectly positioned to speak on this because I'm not somebody that dropped out. I'm not somebody that chose an easy major. I'm not somebody that didn't have a lot of day-to-day -day responsibilities. Actually, in fact, it was quite the opposite. I was working to be able to pay off as much of my tuition as possible that I could. I was studying biomedical engineering and not even just my bachelor's, but was pursuing my master's at the same time with a neuroengineering concentration. I wrote a major publication. I was taking care of my sick grandmother, all while completing the mental, physical, spiritual, and honest accountability wins that we spoke about and how to design a life that you're obsessed with video. So I was doing all of those. And so yes, time was of essence. Yes, time was limited. But I am somebody that will always tell people I'm not the most gifted. I'm not somebody that's the most talented by any means. I'm not the smartest, but I am really good at saying no. I am really good at setting boundaries. I am really good at trying to get rid of every other little distraction in my life. I am really good at focusing my time. You see, if you look at a majority of 20 year olds or college students, you look at their day to day lives and there's a lot of time being misused and people fail to recognize that it's not that one finite distraction, but it takes up mental bandwidth. It takes up mental real estate and that tends to then compound into more and more lack of productivity and that can become really, really dangerous when going unchecked for quite a long time, which it tends to do. So look at your day to day, do an actual audit of how you spend your days. And I'm not saying every single minute has to be hyper focused by any means, but I am saying that you should absolutely use your time more intentionally. And if you keep saying that money is of importance to you, if you keep saying that you want to generate a business, but then you fail to utilize your time, at least a portion of it effectively geared towards making progress on a high value skill, you are doing it all wrong and so also understand the fact that when you are saying no it does not make you a rude person saying no is a deeper yes to what you really want and in this time you want to make money so you have to be able to hone in on that focus number three systematize everything like an engineer this is probably one of the greatest traits that I've been able to pull from my time in my studies and then having worked in those medical companies. As an engineer, you're always trying to understand the inputs, the system itself and the outputs and looking to curate ways to make it efficient, right? Or to at least understand the process as a whole so that you can continuously have more depth of knowledge on that system. And in turn, you're going to naturally understand where the lack of efficiency resides and then you'll fix it. That's what an engineer does, but that's what you need to be doing in your day-to-day -day lives, especially as you are curating a business. Something that I always recommend is get in the habit of carrying around a notebook or utilizing a notes app on your phone like Notion and having the opportunity to constantly document the information that is coming your way. We talked a lot about the importance of a second brain and this is aligned to that. It's the idea that our brains are incredible. They can do phenomenal things but our working memory is absolutely limited. It cannot hold many things at one time that we can manipulate in real time. And therefore we need a system of capturing that information so that we don't use important real estate in our minds to then be able to try and hold on to that piece of information when in reality that doesn't really have much utility. So instead, if you can get in the habit of documenting the things that you see in a long span of time, you're going to naturally find patterns. And when you can analyze those patterns, you can start to curate protocols to make your system more efficient. I think personal branding is probably one of the best examples of this. We talk a lot about this in our mentorship program because I truly believe a personal brand is the opportunity in today's information age. It's projected to more than double at around $450 billion in just three years. And in that personal branding, I talk about it from my system standpoint and how I've been able to generate over 8 million followers across my platforms. And it's with the engineering mindset. When I was first curating content, I was documenting everything with a notebook of mine, trying to understand what types of content works. And if you do that for four and a 
and a half years every single day, it's obvious that patterns are going to arise. But I see this happen so many times, people don't do it and they'll utilize a very low efficiency system that eventually turns to them burning out. And you see that across the creative space, a lot of people talking about burnout, but it's because they were never able to curate an efficient system for themselves like I have and like the best creators do. And I am here to tell you that it's not just in personal branding, but it's in everything. It's how you go about schooling. And that's how I was able to curate the learning system and help thousands of students with my book. That is what you should do. You should always think like an engineer and document everything, analyze it, go ahead and then curate systems that improve upon the efficiency. Those are what protocols are. And this is a really great opportunity to then be able to generate a big business or generate any side hustle that has high income potential this is really, really important for you to start doing. Number four, be careful who you listen to. And this one kind of pains me to say because I truly believe that my family and my friends have my best interest at heart. I truly believe that. And so when they provide me advice, I really respect it. But you have to be very careful who you listen to because if my family members, if none of my friends are at the position in life that I eventually want to get towards, you have to be very careful as to which information or which advice you allow into your mind. We talked about this really important real estate that we have in our minds and even the smallest portion of it being filled with bad advice can then compound into a lack of focus and that's not what I want for you and that's certainly not what I want for me either. You see a lot of this mass information even though it can be well intended, all just tends to lead into chaos and confusion and will halt progress. And something that we always talk about is the idea of trying to achieve momentum because then that's how you start to get this frictionless, cyclic behavior of constantly making progress forward even when you don't feel like it. That's what we want to get to. Everything that's going to halt that progress is a bad thing and a lot of it tends to be the advice that we hear from the people around us, especially if you haven't gone through the process of curating a circle of individuals that are high value in that domain. I don't necessarily mean that my family and my friends weren't high value, they absolutely were, but in different domains, right? In terms of the business side, absolutely they weren't. So how smart would I be to then take their advice and start to implement it if they've never done it themselves? That's what I mean in terms of trying to have this filter on. There's gonna be a lot of people in your ears. All you need to do is go ahead and find those resources to learn from, put in the practice, keep your head down and constantly learn and document like an engineer and you'll be fine if you do that for for a long period of time. Number five, build an audience. And this is probably the biggest secret. And if you are in the business world, it's probably not a secret to you, but if you are unfamiliar with it, then perhaps you don't understand the power of building a brand. And now we have gotten the opportunity to build a personal brand. I need to try and put this in the light that perhaps it brings a light bulb moment into your eyes. And I'm gonna put it in the context of my dad's business. My dad runs a contracting business and he's always had a hard time finding clients. And that meant that his job was very, very seasonal, right? In the sense where there's going to be some instances, especially in the summers where a lot of people are doing renovations and he'll have good work. But in the winters, perhaps people aren't necessarily doing that. And so you'll find very, very low income months. And that isn't good for a business. Then you might ask, how come he wasn't able to find and capture more leads? Well, because when he was my age and he was doing this business, you had to pay to get your business in the front of your customers. You had to pay for it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like you have to pay for it. Whether it was a newspaper you were paying for, whether it was a TV channel that you were paying for, in order to advertise your company, you had to pay for that spot. Social media has allowed you to do something completely revolutionary and I don't understand how more people aren't seeing it, right? But perhaps I do understand it because this is just completely unfamiliar. And I want to push this idea onto you so that you're able to think about it. Social media has completely reduced that barrier to entry. You don't need to have any money to do this. You can have zero dollars, and trust me, I had zero dollars for many, many, many years to 
still be able to do social media. And if you can do social media the right way, and I truly believe that I built an audience the right way, you have a really, really, really incredible opportunity in front of you. Because if that audience is fully aligned with you, and that's what you should do when you're creating a personal brand, you have the opportunity then to identify their biggest problem areas, right? Identify their biggest pain points, provide free value to then be able to help them gain that trust and credibility. And if you want to help them with more depth of information and perhaps more personal help, then you can curate a product or service and to be able to leverage towards the audience. And your audience will appreciate that because they trust you. They want to learn from you. And that's a win-win situation. A personal brand is one of the most incredible, incredible opportunities in today's information age. I will say it over and over and over and over again. I wish that I could jump through the screen and shake you by the shoulders to hopefully be able to exude the level of conviction I have when I'm speaking on this. It's what we talk a lot about in our personal branding workshops, in our mentorship program. If you're interested in joining that to learn more about it, I'd highly recommend it. We talk about personal branding a ton. We talk about personal development a ton. And if you're watching this video, you're likely a great fit for it because you're highly ambitious. So please start to curate an audience for yourself. I've been able to do it every single day for the last four and a half years while doing everything I mentioned before in terms of my academic pursuits, in terms of my professional pursuits. Even in the midst of that, every single day, I was able to carry it video. You can too. And for you to not do that, knowing where this industry is headed in the next three, next four years, you're missing a golden opportunity. And I hope that you take advantage of it, especially if you're trying to start a business from zero. Number six, before you network, unnetwork first. So many times I hear the buzzword of networking just thrown out there and people are constantly going out and trying to seek the relationships to then be able to develop businesses and find the right partners or investors. And what I want to tell you right now is that we have that limited mental real estate. We have limited bandwidth. And probably what's happening is that much of your focus and your time and your energy is being spent on people that don't necessarily align with your goals, right? And that was me. Because when you grow up in high school, especially, you are surrounded by people that are based on your location. And then sometimes when you go into university, you get put into a group because they're in your classes, et cetera. And so what happens is that you just find friends and you stick to them because it's comfortable. And if they're bad influences to you, and we know that temptation runs really, really heavy, whether you're a student or whether you're a working professional, and we know how big clicks are, I want you to understand that it's important that you get rid of that first. Being alone doesn't mean that you're lonely. And I, and I see people cling on to people for that comfort's sake, when in reality, just holding them back. You need more free bandwidth. You need more free mental real estate. And to do that, you need to unnetwork from the people around you that are holding you back. You don't have to do this disrespectfully. You can very much do this in a cordial way. And I've said this before, saying no to people doesn't mean that you're being disrespectful. It means a deeper yes to the things that you really want. And again, if you're watching this video, it's very much the case likely that you want to do something big with your life. And I highly encourage you to take space away from that. Take the time alone to then be able to learn about these high value skills experience and do the work for it, do the work on yourself. And then as you do that, then go out and I guarantee you'll tend to attract the people that you're trying to look for, right? You'll attract a lot of high value individuals because people can see that within you. And that's how you can start to cultivate a network that's actually going to be fruitful to you. I know that everyone tells you that the first thing that you should do is go out and just network and network and network. And that's really, really important, but you need the space to be able to do that. And that's why you should unnetwork first, get a really good understanding of who you are, do the four wins, have an opportunity to build any type of high value skill and then go out into the world. And I promise you, people are going to naturally be attracted to you. Number seven, money isn't the goal, providing value is. I find people are in such a rush to generate money that they will settle on a bad product and focus on promoting it. And they look to capture more and more leads and then try to convert them into clients or customers and the product is bad. And then actually in turn, over time, you lose that client, you lose that 
customer and then they tend to talk bad about you to their friends and it turns into a very bad cyclic behavior of a company where a company should be focused on providing a really good product, taking time with it, going ahead and building something that you truly believe in that's going to be able to actually solve a pain point of the audience that you are trying to target this product towards or the service towards, and then being confident in that after having done the market research, having done multiple iterations of it, and then you can land on a minimal viable product and then go ahead and promote it. And when you can do that and then also realize that your product is probably not going to be perfect and be able to take that feedback as not criticism, but as an opportunity to continuously develop your product, you're going to have a really, really good chance of making sustained money as a business. Because if you can really focus on the value that you're providing with the right type of product and service to meet that customer need, that's so much more important. And then the promotions will not just happen. And I really hope that you listen to my earlier point about building an audience through a personal brand and that you can leverage the two for some really, really great opportunities in the future to generate, again, a high income potential. And I want to leave off on this. When I talk about making money, I really do mean it in the lens of what you want, right? You don't have to make $10,000 a month. You don't have to make $5,000 a month, but an extra few hundreds of dollars is probably going to be helpful for for a lot of us in this economy, and that's up to you to make a decision on. All of these seven pieces of advice are going to help you curate the right types of mental frameworks to then go out into the world and be able to identify that opportunity and take advantage of it and capitalize. So in future videos, I'm more than happy to further break down into specifics in regards to how I did it or what I was looking for when I was generating my businesses. But in this video, I really, really hope that this can be a good starting foundation for all of my entrepreneurs out there, no matter what age, you can absolutely do it. And it takes this different type of mentality. And you can see it across all successful entrepreneurs. You'll look at them and you'll be able to talk with them and you see that there's a different framework. There's a different understanding of the way that they view things. And I want you to have that same type of mentality. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments below in terms of what you've thought. And again, please provide any type of specific topics you want covered around business. And I'd be more than happy to generate those videos as well. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and of course, subscribe. And until next time, please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all at the top.